Welcome to day four of uh, me being out. I'm going to do a lesson today where we talk about, uh, or I actually I add another chapter into the beating the test series. Uh, when I was first hired, um, I actually used one of these as one of my evaluations, which I know you don't think is a big deal, but it basically uh, said that I was going to show uh, an administrator that one of the things I was going to teach you guys is how to use the technology that we have to sort of um, maneuver around some of the uh, intricacies of the end of course test. And back then it was the old gateway. Uh, but we had a beating the test series there too. There were very few of them. In fact, there are not a lot of beating the test. This uh, Today's maybe two more days out of the whole semester were possibly five days out of the entire semester maybe that were beating the test. Every other day it's, you know, the real thing. But this stuff doesn't really transfer into geometry and based on what the state requires, um, that's where your mathematical path will likely end. So I felt like it's a complete waste of time to spend trying to do uh, breaking factors and everything else when I can focus on things that you'll actually use um, when you move on. And this doesn't really relate as much to real life as something else does. So uh, this is the beating the test series. The very first thing that you're going to do when I'm multiplying, adding, subtracting, dividing, or factoring polynomials, which is all the stuff that you end up doing, um, is to make sure that your X button is zero. Or is not zero, I'm sorry. So if you have your calculator here, here's the X button. It's right here. So hit the X button and hit enter. If you get a zero there, then your calculator is not set to work this method. If the X is set for zero, then this little uh, kind of skeezy little method to get by doesn't really work. So how you reset it if it's not. So I'm going to set mine um, real fast. I'm going to change the defaults back to where it is and it should turn my x into zero. So there's my x being zero. Now to solve, to fix that problem, all you really have to do is graph something. So go into the y equals button, type in say 3, make sure x is in it when you graph it, 3x plus 5 say, and graph it. Should give you a nice little graph there. Now when you clear out, which is just send you back to this main page, your x value is 10. So that solved that problem. So I'm using, now that my thing is not set on zero, if you always, by the way, get A as your answer of a multiple choice problem using this method, it means that it is very, very, very likely that your x is equal to zero. If you keep getting A's over and over again, that's why, almost always. It's usually not set up, the tests aren't usually set up that way. But let's see the, how this works, and you can see why that would be the case. So, say I have this big problem. 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 plus 7x to the third power plus 2x plus 5. Now, I will say that this method is ridiculously meticulous. You have to make sure that you press everything into the calculator exactly as it is in the question. Otherwise, it will not work. But it does work almost magically the exactly the same. So I'm going to hit the parentheses. I'm going to type in 3, hit the X button right there. You can square it. You can use the caret button to square it plus 3x, plus 1, and I'm going to close that out. Then, i got to get that little white mark off. There we go. It's chalk, by the way. Not anthrax. Plus 7x to the third power, plus 2x, plus 5. Now, a few of you have issues with output, which means that you have trouble, uh, not trouble thinking about what the problem is, but getting it down on paper the way that you want it to. I would absolutely 100% suggest that once you type it in, you lay your calculator next to the problem to see if it's, it matches up. And this one happens to match up perfectly. It's exactly what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to hit enter. The number that you get, make a mental note of it, write it down somewhere, whatever you've got to do. I'm going to write it down in this blue. I had a black marker, but that would not be very uh, easy to see. This is your magic number. Your magic number might be different than mine. It is completely irrelevant what that number is, other than comparing it to the answer choices. So the number that you got could have been something totally different than this, but as long as you didn't get zero, or uh, your x being zero, I think if your x was zero, you'd end up getting six for this problem. So as long as you didn't get six, you're probably safe. So, um... Here's what you do. You take this number, plug in the answer choices. The answer choice that gives you this number is the right answer. I know it's really lame. Uh, 10x to the fifth power 
That's what this is. I'm going to lay this right here so you can see it. 10x to the fifth power plus 5x squared plus 6. See, it matches it up. 10 to the x to the fifth, 5x squared plus 6. Hit enter. Not the right number, so that's not the right answer. Let me try flipping the light on to see if that'll do anything for me. Mm, might work a little better. Let's look at the next one. So, by the way, once they don't work, you make a tentative line with pencil through it. That way, in case you have to go back. I don't have a pencil, so I'm going to use a marker. 10x to the fifth power plus 5x plus 6. Just like that. I'm going to hit the button. Still too big. Not, you know, it doesn't work. Not enough. So that's out. By the way, those last two look the same. And that would be because of the fact that the 10 is there and it kind of fiddles with it a little bit. So let's, let's look at 7x to the third plus 11x to the second plus 6. 8106. That's pretty close, but not exactly the right number. So let's try this one and see if it actually gives us the right answer. x to the third power plus 3x squared. Mm, let's raise it to the second power. Plus 5x plus 6. 7356. This is 7356, so this one, and so is this. So this is the correct answer. To check, by the way, if you combine like terms up here, you'd have 7x to the third power plus 3x squared. Combine these two, give you 5x, and then you get 6. So I'm just showing you that that works. This number, when I typed it out, was the same as this one, so that is a match. So that's my answer choice. If you somehow got A for this one, it means you did not press it in correctly or that your X is still set to zero. So graph something and then come back. Let's look at another one. These might be actually much easier to just do by combining like terms. But if you have a problem with doing combining like terms, I'm just showing you another method to do it. I'm not a big fan of it, but it is what it is. So my x is not equal to 0, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, type in 11. By the way, x here is the same as a. As long as you only have one variable, this works. It doesn't have to be x. It can be a. That's fine. Don't go into the text menu and find a. That doesn't work. All those uh, letters are, have different uh, values, and you don't know what value they have until you're actually involved in the process, and it doesn't work. So just use x in place of the variable. Like I said when we talked about binomials, if there's different variables, this method does not work. So you actually have to solve those problems the mathematical way, which I already showed you. I'm just showing you how to get through these. x to the second power minus 5x oops, plus 6, and I'm going to close it, minus, parentheses, 3x to the second power minus 2x plus 4. So... Uh, there's the 11x squared minus 5x plus 6 minus 3x to the second power uh, minus 2x plus 4. I mixed and matched, by the way. This is x squared, but this one is raised to the second power. It doesn't really matter. 772. I'm going to write that down. And I know everybody thinks, well, I'll just remember what that number is. But sometimes the answers are actually very, very close to each other. So physically write it down on paper. Don't be super lazy for, like, you know, just one or two problems in your life. I mean, it's a diploma waiting, people. So let's do negative 8, x to the second power, minus 3x, plus 2. Negative 8, 28. That is not it. 8x to the second power, minus 3x, plus 2. 772. This number and this number are the same. Let's check to see if it's right, by the way, mathematically, which we did before. Um, this would change to plus. This would be a minus. That would get a plus. This would be a minus. So the a squared, 11 minus 3 is 8a squared. A negative 5a plus 2 would be negative 3a. And 6 minus 4 would be positive 2. And look, it's the same thing. So mathematically it works. Uh, in a calculator it works. Let's look at a couple more. Let's do some multiplication now. Which, by the way, I assure you also works. 6a plus 1 
or the quantity 6a plus 1 times t the quantity 2a minus 9. Well, maybe you lose your mind on test day, and you, you guys have worked really, really hard this semester, and many of you have worked hard in the past. Well, let's look at how you can get this problem right if you totally lose your mind and forget to look in the ceiling, or you're not in this room when you take the test, which I don't think you are. And you don't. there's no FOIL to think about, so you've got to go with what the calculator says. Make sure x is not equal to 0. It is not, in this case, at 0, so that's just fine. Then parentheses, 6x plus 1, 2x minus 9, matches up exactly right, 671. So I'm going to start trying problems down at the bottom. 12x to the second power minus 9. Nope. 12x to the second power minus 52x minus 9. Yep. 671. So your correct answer is B. By the way, this only works in multiple choice, obviously. Um, but if I did FOIL, I'd do front, which would give me uh, 12A squared. I'd do outside, which would give me uh, negative 54A. I'd do inside, which is plus 2A. I'd do uh, last, which is negative 9. You did this like yesterday, so I don't feel like I need to go over it for a long way. These would combine back and give you that negative 52A. So it does work out mathematically. I'm just showing you this method. You can do whatever you want with it. Now, let's talk about dividing. Mathematically dividing polynomials takes forever, and it's a lot of check and guess. I know that you guys deal with uh, usually some pretty serious attention problems. Yes, I'm talking to those of you who just zoned back in after being zoned out, even though I'm trying to do something that will actually benefit your life. Come back. Stop zoning out for a second. Many of you suffer from those uh, travails of um, having attention deficit problems. Well, dividing polynomials is something I know you would get into and then say, oh, forget this, I hate it, and then you'd give up. And I can't afford for you to give up. You've been working really hard. I want you to continue to work hard. I'm going to show you how to do this problem using the old calculator here and be able to get it right. So the first thing you have to do, of course, is make sure x is not equal to 0. It's not. It's 10 for me. It could be something else for you, by the way. It doesn't necessarily have to be 10. I just did it that way, which means the answers I get could be different. Maybe you didn't get 671 on the last problem. You got 532. Well, as long as you tried into the answers until you got 532, you're good to go. But like I said, be very specific. Uh, be very suspicious if you get A, because it possibly means that your um, X is set to 0, which could be a problem. So I'm going to do 2X to the second power plus 13x plus 18, and I'm going to close that out, Then I'm going to divide by the quantity x plus 2. The big thing here is that you have to have those parentheses. If you don't have the parentheses in there, this is going to be a total disaster. So hit enter. I got 29. So I'm going to look at my answer choices and try to get 29. x minus 9, nope x plus 9. Nope. And by the way, if you remember this is 10, these two are real easy to tell you the wrong answer. Uh, 2x minus 9. Nope. So I hope this works. 2x plus 9 gives me 29. So that's the answer, 2x plus 9. That's the quickest way to use the calculator method to divide. Let's look at one more divide question. And then I'm going to set you loose on some of your problems. For this one, it's a little bit different. It is a divide question, but the only thing really different about it is it's not in the form that you saw before. There's no like parentheses or anything else. In order to get this one correct using calculator method, you need to rewrite the problem in that form. What this means is this divided by this. So we're going to write it out that way. Don't do this divided by this. Because if I have this, for instance, you may vaguely remember something like that when you were a kid. Uh, 4 divided by 160, let's say. Well, this does not say... Why did I say that? It's totally backwards. This is 160 divided by 4. 4 is not going to be divided by 160, because the answer I get when I come out, by the way, is 40, in case you forgot how to do long division. So it gives me 40. Um, if I divide 4 into 160 parts, I guarantee you those parts are not going to be uh, 40 because that would be more than 4. That makes no sense. So what this one says is 160 divided by 4. So what this says is the quantity x squared minus 3x minus 10 divided by 
x plus 2. So rewrite the problem like this before you solve it. And then there'll be answer choices down here, and you have to, oh, sorry, like this. Don't forget your parentheses. Don't do what I just did. I told you not to be ridiculous, and then I was ridiculous. That's not fair. Um, so set up your problems so they look like this. Uh, go ahead and put the division sign here. Move whatever's in front back here in parentheses. Otherwise, it'll totally mess you up. And, and in your on your end of course test, you'll have answer choices to work with. So that's the beating the test for solving polynomials. Uh, tomorrow we'll do another uh, beating the test most likely. I think it'll be about factoring or possibly rational expressions. And then we'll uh, eventually get to factoring. So good luck. Remember to make sure x is not equal to 0. Be real meticulous. I know some of you will whine and complain, but please be nice to the person in charge today. It's not their fault that I make you do annoying calculator things sometimes. It's the state's fault, actually, because they think you should do polynomials to get a diploma, even though, uh, not for nothing, it is not likely you'll use them all that much in your regular life when you, become, when you actually go to a job. You'd use them in college, but uh, maybe, 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 if you majored in the right things, so... Good luck.